Hey everybody, thanks for, thanks for joining me. Uh, Jake here. This video has zero flying in it. If that's what you're into, uh, this video is not going to be for you. Uh, for those of you that want to learn how to fly your paramotor commercial internationally, you're in the right spot. That's what this video is all about. Uh, this video is going to start out in Wales. Uh, this is the intro. Sorry I didn't do a good intro while I was in Wales. Uh, however, that's what this is. All I did there was drain my tank and emptied my carb uh, by running a drive. I flew from England, went back to the United States, and it was relatively pain-free, uh, except for a massive amount of prep work to get my paramotor and the travel bag ready to fly. I have a Maverick Sport I bought uh, with the travel bag, but the travel bag needed a lot of work before I considered it ready to travel with. Uh, and this video will capture that. Anyways, thanks for joining me. This video will probably be longer than most of mine because uh, I don't want to leave out any steps that I think are going to be important if you're trying to travel yourself. But thanks for joining me. My last flight on this motor until it is in the States. Until I'm flying the Colorado River. So, I need to prep it. So one of the things I need to do is get rid of my fuel. Alright, so what I'm doing here is just emptying the carburetor by repeatedly starting it with an empty tank. Uh, once I was done with that, then I just pulled the spark plug and let it evaporate. Uh, one of the things I've done is I have bought a 17 liter tank in the United States. This is the max capacity you're allowed to fly with, 5 gallons. So I'm going to not use this tank until I get there. Uh, I'll assemble it then. I don't want to risk having any smell of fuel, any smell of petrol when I get to the airport because uh, if I, if they can smell it, they won't fly it. But looking forward to this, uh, I just ordered fuel lines and that'll be good. This travel bag uh, has housed the paramotor for quite some time and it smells like petrol on the inside. So I'm a little worried about that. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to take off these pieces and try to get the smell out. I've done some reinforcement to the travel bag. I need to take off as much as I can and then wash it off. I took fabric softener sheets and I put those inside of this bag and I've had those in there for a few days now uh, and it seems to have helped with the smell but I think washing these thoroughly is really what's gonna do the trick these are what is exposed to any uh, oil anything that's uh, any of the fumes that are escaping from the exhaust or the air intake or even the uh, breather on the top of the fuel tank. Um, 
these are what are taking the brunt of it. So I'll wash these down with soap and water and let them dry. Um, I don't know if this is cardboard inside. And I don't know if there's a way to take it out. It may just be stitched in with no way to remove it. Which kind of looks that way. But it definitely looks like some sort of foam board. That it's not designed to take any weight. So what happens is if anything gets set on top of that bag, this is what is trying to hold it up. And it's clearly not designed for that job. Like this is about as thin as it gets. It's a super thin foam with just paper on the outsides of it. So I'm glad I didn't decide to get it all wet. So I'm gonna do that on the other parts. Uh, I'll probably hit this with a lighter just so that it doesn't fray. All right, that should keep it from coming apart. Let's do that again. I'm gonna throw these in the washing machine. See how they turn out when we're done. So I am done with washing these. Uh, here's my bag, but this is one of the side pieces. Uh, this is the one that's got the most foam in it. Let's tilt this down just a bit. Uh, you can see the cuts that I made. They stayed fairly well. This one frayed a little bit, but not too bad. Uh, but I think it'll all go back together well. I hung them outside for a couple of days to let them dry. And now I'm going to put them back together. So I gotta say, I am disappointed in the quality of this stuff. It's super cheap. Just thin, flimsy. This is the structure for that entire box. I think I'm going to try to reinforce these. See if I can make something work. All right, I've got this carbon fiber pole that I use for my windsock, but somebody had a mid-air collision with it. Not gonna say any names, but it was Alex. And I think I might half these poles and tape them onto this to give it some structure. All right, all stitched up. Do that to the rest of them. Uh, my travel bag is now put together. Fully put my weight on this, I think, and it'd be all right. And it's all just lightweight carbon fiber. Okay, everybody. I have my paramotor torn down and reassembled. I cleaned everything really well. Um, new fuel tank, new exhaust. That's how she looks. Uh, now I am going to now I'm going to bag it up. Uh, I've got my I've got my travel bag all ready, uh, all reinforced and ready to use. So I'm just gonna let you guys sit here and watch me work. All right, so all I did on this was I wrapped it in shrink wrap and then I put a trash bag over it before I stuck it in the bag. I didn't do this on the way back. 
Uh, when I checked in with TSA, when I landed in Denver, uh, I talked to them about what they needed me to do, and they told me if it's all wrapped up like that, they're going to just cut it open with a razor blade, uh, and that's going to risk cutting into the harness and doing more damage than it's worth. So I didn't do this for the return trip, and it made it just fine. So something to consider if you're trying to make it vapor proof. Uh, it may not be worth it. Okay, so here is what I have taken off the paramotor to put it in the bag uh, and lighten it up as much as I can and reduce the smell of fuel. One, I pulled my fuel lines and the bulb. These will go in a suitcase, not a carry-on, obviously. It'll be checked luggage. Uh, my reserve parachute, I didn't want it on there because it's a bunch more weight. The Agama float system will also go in a suitcase. And then my tool kit and always important shit tickets. Gotta have those. This is the first time this hoop will ever have gone in that bag. And I hate putting it in it because that bag is too small for this hoop when it's coiled up. And so it ends up causing this hoop to either bend or kink. That's a poor design for a travel bag if you ask me. But We'll be as gentle as we can while we do this. Just a little bit tighter. I used to do this every time I took my paramotor apart. It ruined a hoop. Parajet told me it was my fault, even though it's a poor design. So now I try not to take my paramotor apart. But there we go. It's as good as I can make that. Alright, prop is in. Spars are in. Hoop is in. Paramotor is in. Can you read that? One, you can stand off now. One, oh, 145.4. So 146. All right, y'all. We got to lose weight. Four kilograms. I don't know how we're going to do that. What else can I take off? Are you asking me? <laughs> I can take the harness off. That's a pain in the ass. We take this off. All right, let's weigh this again. I did uh, make a phone call and talk to British Airways today. Uh, they said that we're good to go with the internal combustion motor, good to take the paramotor. However, I need to contact TSA to make sure I'm going to be able to get it back uh, for the return trip. So that'll be another adventure. Uh, the biggest deal is that it makes it there and it sounds like it will without too much of a problem. Uh, but making it back from the States, maybe another fight. Uh, at least Chase will be there to help me out with that. All right, y'all, on the road, headed to London Heathrow, headed back to the States temporarily. My 
beautiful bride over here is so jealous. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> All right, well, it's been a few weeks now since I've flown. The weather's been crap, and then I prepped the paramotor and uh, did all that stuff that you've already seen in this video. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens at the airport. We should have plenty of time, but my paramotor is a little overweight, and all my bags are a little overweight, so uh, I do have a a spare duffel bag in there that I can pull out and throw stuff into if I have to pay for another bag, but we're going to try not to. See you when we get to the airport. And then I can push the other one. Yeah. So, I didn't take footage in the airport. Um, I don't like feeling like a criminal uh, when I'm recording videos in the airport, so I don't do that much. Uh, with that said, I didn't have any issues. Uh, I got up to the counter. The guy didn't seem to care about anything, including his job. Uh, he let me take everything right through. So, the next clip is once I'm through security and in a lounge. All right, I have made it through security, and I'm just about to do some editing on some videos. I'm sitting here waiting on breakfast, uh, hanging out in the lounge. I think I'll sit here for a few hours before I, well, a couple hours before I have to head to the gate. All right, off the plane, made it to Denver. Let's go see if the paramotor made it in one piece. All right, y'all. Uh, last interjection and the outro. Uh, I made it back to the States just fine. There was no issues. I'm glad that I reinforced that travel bag uh, and it did everything that I did to get the paramotor ready to fly. Uh, ultimately, you guys, the biggest thing is look at the rules on whoever you're flying with and follow them. Know what you have to do. Uh, for British Airways, I had to email them at least two days in advance and let them know that I was bringing it, uh, uh, give them sizes, dimensions, all of that. If you don't do that stuff, you're going to be wishing you had. Uh, it, it just depends on the airline that you're flying with, though. I flew with British Airways both directions, so the stuff that I did for the first leg uh, was good for the return trip as well because it was a round-trip ticket. Uh, had I flown back with a different airline, there's different requirements. Ultimately, know what they are, follow them. Uh, it is possible to travel commercial with your paramotor. You just got to know the system and be able to explain it to the people at the counter when they don't know, uh, which did happen both directions. Anyways, I'm out. Thanks for joining me on the adventures.